volunteers, we can get four more. We'll do it again. Because you really How many of you have never played this before? Anybody? Oh, good. That makes it easier. <laughs> For those of you who have not seen it, I'm going to be directing. Uh, from the front, I'm going to be kneeling down. And I will point uh, to whoever should be speaking. <coughs> Only the person who is being pointed at may speak, but together they are going to tell a story. The trick is, of course, they don't know who's going to be speaking next, or when they're going to stop speaking if I'm pointing at them. I might stop at the end of the sentence if I'm feeling particularly nice. I might stop in the middle of the sentence. If we really get going, we stop in the middle of a word and expect the next person to pick up the remaining syllables. Uh, we might not get that far. <laughs> To be successful, a story needs a couple of things. You need a place to have a story. Every child knows this. If you start telling a story and you miss something, they'll, they'll be confused. They won't know what's going on. You need a place. It can be a simple place. In Asia, in the jungle, in, on a mountain high up in the Andes, in the ocean, uh, wherever it happens to be, a place. And then we need character or characters. Um, a fish named Jimmy found himself high up on the air. <laughs> 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 well, is that the six words? It's, it's yeah. useful. Yeah. <laughs> you can have more than one main character, but it does get confusing. And names are useful. I will say uh, <clears throat> names are useful. It, it, it keeps the story flowing better. Uh, and then a conflict, as the fish is on the mountain in the Andes. Well, that's a problem. If you have a conflict, then the story is about resolving that conflict. When the, when the conflict is resolved, the story is ended, and we will get the moral of the story. Kiss is very important here. Keep it simple, straight, right? Mm. Get too complicated, things break down. We don't try to be funny. Funny just happens with this particular uh, story. So, you have to keep it squished together and pretend to like each other. <laughs> we need to get the title of a story that has never been written. Make up one. It's the title of a story that's never been written. Something you would like to hear. Yes? A fish named George. A fish <laughs> named George. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's do it. Ah. so laden with a heavy golden fish, fleece to breathe, whether or not your name is George or something. George was very upset as he looked around, and he didn't see any friends, and he was having a, a hard time breathing. After all, with the fleece and the cane, it was really upsetting. Then, until he encountered someone who had a bucket of water. And he said, oh, water! <laughs> And in he jumped. <coughs> but he still, he had water. He could breathe in his own element. But his top hat got incredibly damp. So he said to the friend with the water, You have saved me. You have given me water and I can breathe. I... But the heavy golden fleece sank to the bottom of the bucket. And... <laughs> and with his heavy golden fleece at the bottom, gave him something to sit upon, and he took his hat and to his friend. And he took his hat and handed it out to his friend with all the water in the hat. And the friend said, all well and good to have the hat, but what about the golden fleece? And so the golden fleece is wet, but it could be yours if you say the magic word. So he picked up the fleece and said, a la peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> and the fleece dripped into the bucket, filling the bucket so that George could continue to breathe. 
And the friend took the fleece, wrung it out very thoroughly, into the top hat, and the top hat was filled with water and very heavy. And the friend said, I love this fleece, and I even love the top hat, but what I would love more <laughs> is to leave now and go to the Andes with the golden fleece. <laughs> Without the fish, because, you know, fish in the Andes just is not viable. So the friend took the fleece, but he left the bucket of water for the fish to be able to swim, and he went up high and he found it. <laughs> he put down and said, We'll let this dry and it'll absorb the fresh mountain air. And then the gold will drip out and I'll become fabulously wealthy. And the fish will be perfectly happy swimming in his bucket, whether his name is George or not. And the moral of the story is... Unless you want it to live. <laughs> <laughs>